as we look at the notes that I'm going to share with y'all this morning, to those of us that are believers in this place and at the sound of my voice, I need you to think about the scriptures from the beginning in Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation of all the places in the scriptures where you have seen examples of God the Father and how he shared the way that we as fathers should live in the life in which we are in today. For what greater example do we have, church, than God the Father to be our example? And that's what we're going to look at this morning the importance of being a father. But let me make this statement first. We all, I think we all understand this, but I want to make this very clear. It all begins when a man, a husband, and a female, a wife, start a family. And during that time, a child is conceived. Then you become a father, man, men. At that very moment of conception, you become a father. And everything that we are going to talk about this morning relates to how we need to be a godly father as our heavenly father is to us. God is our perfect example, number one. We look at the early days of Christ as he came on the scene. And we think about the relationship that Jesus had with God the Father. Now you might say, well, you know, Jesus is God and God is Jesus, and that is true. But when Christ came on the scene, he came in the form of not only God, but also man. So, so many times when we hear him through his prayers and through his communication with God the Father, he's speaking from that human perspective, from that child's perspective to his heavenly Father. So first we see that great relationship between God the Father and Jesus Christ. Second, God is the Father of the human race and cares for us all. Now let me say that again. God the Father is the Father of the entire human race, and He cares for us all. Do y'all believe God cares for y'all today? I know He does. Do you believe that God cares for everyone in the human race? And the answer is absolutely true. And as we think about that, from Adam all the way to today, God has always cared for his human creation. Now, I'm not talking about plant life and all that kind of stuff. That's another topic. This is specifically about the human race. And God cares for all of us. Good, bad, ugly, pretty, fat, skinny, whatever it may be, God cares for us all. Next. God is the Father of mercy. Think about in your life. Think about in the times in which we live. Think about history as we think about the mercy of God. God the Father is the ultimate as far as mercy is concerned, isn't he? Even as the children of God, the Jews, as they come along, he had mercy on them regardless to what they'd done. And you know what? The same God, our Heavenly Father, has that type of mercy for us today. And fathers, we need to remember that. All of us, young or old alike, it doesn't matter. We need to understand that. But as we think about God the Father, and Him being the creator of the whole human race, and Him being the ultimate Father, when we come and become a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we begin to have a closer relationship with God the Father. And to me, 
from what I learned from the scriptures is, is that as we accept Christ as Lord and Savior and He becomes our true Heavenly Father, that the relationship opportunity that we have is beyond belief. As I stop and I think about Christianity today, as I stop and think about how we don't take advantage of that relationship opportunity, it really saddens my heart because who else would you rather have as a father than God? He has it all. He owns it all. He is everything. And He can provide for us, and He has through the Scripture, through the Holy Spirit, all that we need. Fathers, believers, in the times in which we live. Well, what makes a good father today? We look at society. We look at the homes today. You know, a lot of people really believe that the problems that we have in our society today is because the family is just it's not a family the way God intended because as we go back to Genesis and we see from the very beginning that God intended for a man and a woman to become one and then to prosper through having children and I don't know if you understand this or not but when it says having a quiver full that means more than one, two, three, four Y'all remember, some of y'all remember back in the day, I'll just say that, when it was not uncommon for a family to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten children. Y'all remember? Y'all know some families like that? I know you do. I do. So as we look at this and as we think about what it takes to be a good father today, the very first point is this. Father loves his children as God loves us. A father loves his children as God loves us. That's a pretty big statement. But that's the first thing that God put on my heart. Because again, when a man and a woman come together and a child is formed in the womb and given life by God Almighty, at that point in time we need to begin loving our children from that point on. I got two boys. I want to strangle them to death sometimes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But I love them and I would give my life for them no matter what. And you know why? Because that is what God expects us to do is to love them unconditionally no matter what they do or have done or will do to us, fathers. Number two, a father provides for his children's needs. My mom and daddy raised us in the mill village. Some of y'all know what the mill village was, Cotton Mill Village. My daddy worked there in the maintenance department. And if you know anything about the cotton mill and those types of environments, they weren't the easiest in the world to work in. But my father provided for us as we grew up. He took care of the needs in our life. He made it so that we could have food on our table. He provided so that we could have clothes on our back. Sometimes they were hand-me-downs. Anybody ever had hand-me-downs? Come on. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with hand-me-downs. Praise God that those are available. But fathers, not only should we love our children, but we need to provide for their needs. And sometimes that means older in life. i got a 30-year-old son that still lives at home. He pays rent, thank God. But we still provide for his needs. I do. Norma does. But fathers, that's our responsibility. A father will protect, this is three, a father will protect his children without regard for self. I wish I could say 
that every household in this country and in this world, that fathers that are in those homes would stand up and give their life for their children. But you know what? That ain't the case. There's so many fathers that when any kind of problems come, they run. They go, they hide, they get away from any harm or danger that may come to their self. But God expects us to stand up, fathers, for our children in spite of what danger may come to us. That's what God the Father would have us do. And we need to do the same for our children. Number four, very important. A father will teach his children what is right in the sight of God. What does that mean? Speaking to you and myself that are born-again believers, that are, are, are part of the family of God, that are Christians, we know what the Scriptures teach us, that we are to raise our children in the ways of the Lord and show them the path that they should go down. Fathers, that is our responsibility. Do we forget so many times? that God placed the man, the husband, as the head of the household. I'm not talking about be a dictator, but with a great responsibility that we answer to God Almighty, that we protect and we teach our children the ways of the Lord. I look back at Cam and I see the young man that he has with him this morning. He's growing up like crazy. We have a responsibility to raise them young ones from the time they're born to the time they leave from us in the ways of the Lord. And if we don't, what kind of father are we in the eyes of God? Number five, a father will always forgive his children because God commands it. Y'all remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about forgiveness. We talked about what Jesus said as as Peter came to him and said, well, how many times are we supposed to forgive? Seven times? And what did Jesus say? No, seven times 70. And like I said, don't pull out the calculator because he's not talking about a number. He's talking about unlimited. Fathers, think about this. How many times does God forgive us? How many times does God forgive us when we do those things that are wrong in His sight? And as we think about forgiveness and as we think about that and how important that is, how can we have a relationship with God the Father if we can't forgive one another and forgive our children? Again, I said... And I have said many times, I love my boys to death. But sometimes I just want to... Because of the things they do and don't do sometimes. But you know what? I forgive them. For for unforgiveness in our heart becomes a festering sore and can cause all kinds of problems. Fathers, we must forgive because God commands it. Number six, a father will lead by example as is pleasing to God. When I heard the count this morning of 29 in Sunday school, my heart dropped. But then I grasped a little bit of reality. And I said, well, maybe, and I hope and pray this, that a lot of these that aren't here this morning are in other churches with their fathers but are they how many fathers are not leading by example and being pleasing to God and they say I'm going to be a good father today I'm going to take my children out on a boat ride I'm going to take my children out on a golfing excursion no pun at my brother here with his knee messed up he's doing better 
what better place for a father to bring their children than to church? We're not even going to have services tonight so that we can spend time with our fathers. I've only got one left. That's, that's Papa. Mother, Father, he's gone to heaven. We'll spend time this evening together. But what kind of father are we if we lead by an example that's not pleasing to God? And it's not just coming to church. It's the things we do at home. Fathers, how many times do we pray over the food before we eat? Fathers, how many times do we show our children God's word and teach them the way we're supposed to? Father, how many times do we love them the way God would have us love them? It's not a part-time job. It's full-time. Until we leave this plane of existence, fathers, that is our responsibility. A father, a father will provide a future for his children. At the early ages, we think of our children as they're growing up. We want them to go to college. We want them to have a profession. We want them to have the best in life. That is our responsibility. There have been cases made, and I have heard this from individuals that have said that we have children. These come from mouths of fathers and mothers. But we have children not to provide for them, not to make a way for them in this world, but so that we can get money from the government. God forbid any born-again believer, Father, that you would ever, ever think that. It is a responsibility that we have by God Almighty to raise our children and bring them up in the ways of the Lord. Five qualities of a godly father. A godly father loves God. A godly father loves God. At some point in time in our life, we accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Men. At some point in time in our life, we got married and we had children. If we are going to love our children and guide them and lead them in the right way, then the first thing we need to do is show that we love God all the time. When our children, especially those of y'all with young children, when they look up at you fathers, what do they see? Do they see a father that loves God and desires for nothing more than to bring honor and glory to God the Father by His example? by our example to those that we come in contact with. So number one, a godly father loves God. Number two, a godly father loves his wife. A godly father loves his wife. In our society today, and has been for some years now, Marriage doesn't mean what it used to as far as the Bible is concerned. When I understand what it means to be married, it means when a man and a woman come together in the eyes of God and become one. And if we're going to become one with our wife, then we need to love our wife as God loves us. Amen? We need to love our wives, fathers, unconditionally. No matter what, we need to love them. Number three, as we love our children, a godly father loves their children. Some of us have grandchildren, and we love our grandchildren too, or we should. Some of us haven't gotten to that point yet. But I'll say this, fathers that we are to love our children because God expects us to and He commands us to love our children unconditionally. 
Brother Danny, you don't understand. It don't matter if I understand or not. God gives us the command to love them unconditionally. Or any of us in this place, men, fathers, worthy of God's love. We're not. We're not. We're absolutely trash, if you will. But God still loves us. And that type of love we need to share with our children. A godly father, number four, is a man of integrity. What does that mean? That means that when we give our word to our children, that we keep it. Now, I fail. I have failed recently. I have failed in the past. I will continue to fail, but I will strive to be the man of integrity that I need to be because God expects us. How can we expect our children to be children of integrity if we're not even men of integrity ourselves? Fathers, we have a responsibility. But don't worry. You're not all alone as a born-again believer because you have the power of the Holy Spirit residing inside of you and I that will help us to be that man of integrity that we need to be. And five, a godly father is a role model of God Almighty. When our children see us, they need to be able to see Jesus in us. When our children look at us or hear about us, the things that we're doing in this world, they need to say, that's my daddy. That's my father. He is a godly man. Because he will stand up for what's right no matter what goes on, no matter what situation he's in. He will be a godly man. And that is the model we should want our children to follow after, that we will be godly, first of all, in the sight of God, but then in the sight of our children as well. Fathers, in the day in which we live, it is so important that we, number one, love God that we, number two, that we live an example to our children the way God expects us to. This world is not responsible for raising our children, fathers. We are. They may go to school. They may go to church. They may go to other places, but it's our responsibility to raise our children. That's why we're fathers to love our wife, to raise our children, to provide, to protect, to do all of those things. You may be struggling as a father. You may be having difficult times as a father. But let me reassure all of us this. God will provide all we need to be the godly father that we need to be.